Yo, this is Tony Vlacos, Team TV, baby. The king of Survivor Cagayan Jungle. This is Survivor Talk with D&D. Let's give these guys from Season 29 a great show. I'll be listening to you guys from my spy shack. I hope everybody enjoys the show. Peace. Hey, everybody. This is Dwayne. And this is David. And we're just two best friends talking about the show we love, Survivor. Tonight is our discussion of the severe, 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 of the severe premiere. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, I meant to do that. Hey, let's start this season off well. Good job. Yeah. The premiere, suck it up and survive. And I would have had an awesome clip of Josh saying that, but uh, let's just say. Me and CBS.com are not on good speaking terms right now. Josh, Josh, I think he's on my team. Yes, <laughs> I think he is. Oh, I don't have our teams I do. divided up, so I don't remember who all's on my team. I know I got the tribes divided up, but now I need to get the teams because teams are more important than tribes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it is now, right? That's right. So uh, if you are, uh, those of you who are live on YouTube and Google, and on our website, welcome. And if you're not, you know we record every Sunday night and every Thursday night this season. And you can watch us live and post on YouTube. And uh, David's going to be watching YouTube tonight. Isn't that right, David? That is right, Dwayne. <laughs> Stop using your microphone. I was coughing. I'm sorry. I'm still. No, you're, not. you're watching the Redskins game, and you know no. it. It's halftime. No, no the, uh, the, I was coughing, so I'm muted. I'm pulling it up now, and it's telling me that. What? <laughs> yeah. Every once in a while, I'll be talking, and David will be like, oh, I, I, and it'll be because he's watching the Redskins game. Go ahead, Dwayne. Tell what you think. Go ahead. Yes. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, Sunday night, we'll be live again at 10 o'clock Eastern time, and that will be the feedback show. So we want you to leave your feedback. So you can do that. Just by going to uh, Survivor Talk with dnd.com slash su not support feedback. <laughs> you are on fire tonight. Go to our website, yeah. Go to our website and go to feedback. You can send us an email. You can uh, record us right there on your computer, or you can call our feedback line. All of that is on our website. All right. So, hey, uh, David, less than a week. The T-shirts, the Survivor Talk with DnD limited run of T-shirts is only good through Tuesday. Tuesday is the last day, and you'll have till like midnight, and I don't know which time zone, so don't <laughs> wait till the last minute. But uh, you can just go to t-shirt.stwdd.com and uh, look at the t-shirts. Order one. They're, they're $20, which is a steal. These, uh, these, this Koyopa and Hunapu buffs are $22, and my T-shirt has a whole lot more material, and it's only twenty. Yeah, they barely cover my arm. So, yeah. and they barely cover Julie, according to my wife. <laughs> my wife is like, you know what? If she doesn't want people to think that about her, then she shouldn't wear. She shouldn't dress like that. I would need two, one for each leg, because I sure wouldn't get a minute. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> anyway, get your T-shirt before Tuesday, or Tuesday is the last day. Twenty dollars. A dollar goes to MS Research, and uh, we're trying to upgrade David's video equipment. So we would like to at least get fifty sold, my friends. We need about another twenty-two to do that. So. Uh, so if we don't make our, our our target goal, that means they're satisfied with how I look right now. Yes. Well, either that or they didn't want to buy a T-shirt, which is fine. <laughs> David and I got T-shirts, which is what we really wanted. When do they get shipped? Uh, they will go out two weeks after the 29th. Okay. That's what the website says. So there you go. As always, thank you for starting your Amazon shopping using our link. Or as I told my mom today, just make a shortcut on the desktop and stop calling me every time you want to go shopping on Amazon. <laughs> right? That's like my mom. Can you check and see if you saw my yeah. books that I ordered? No, I can't, Mom. Just Dwayne. Call Dwayne. Yeah. Here's his number. Yeah. <laughs> Amazon.stwdd.com. How's that for an easy link? There you go. Amazon.stwdd.com. Guess what, David? What, Dwayne? We have a new monthly supporter. Awesome. His name is Scott 
Perino or Perino or Perino. We'll Scott. just call him. We'll just call him Scott. There you go. Thank you, Scott. He went over to Patreon.com and supports us monthly. Let's get to our initial thoughts, David, because we have people watching and they're tired of me talking about all this other stuff. Okay. So, initial thoughts. I have several. I have three initial mm -hmm. thoughts on the premiere episode, the 90-minute episode of Survivor San Juan del Sur, Blood vs. Water. Okay. Do you want me to give... Stop watching the game. I'm looking at YouTube to see if anybody's... <laughs> Sorry, I apologize. No, I'm just playing with the you. The game's over there. I you know. Over here. I knew you weren't watching the game, but I thought it'd be it's funny a, to... It's a half time anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have three. Here's my first initial thought. What happened to Coyopa being the challenge kings we thought they would be? They, they ran into a puzzle. Hello? <laughs> Not, gosh, not only they that, they lost reward, and they lost the immunity challenge. And they lost rock, paper, scissors. Nothing. They exactly. Nothing. They lost three oh, things three. in a row. <laughs> y'all y'all are losers, is what Propes would say to them. That's right. Do you have an initial thought you want to insert in between mine? Well, I just want to say, I did not. No, don't I do didn't, that. Like oh, that. Don't do that. Okay. <laughs> I did not dislike – no, I didn't – I liked the episode. We were talking earlier, and even the worst episode of One World I liked. For some reason, or another. that's how much I like Survivor. Right. This, to me, just – I wanted more – I'm a fan of Day One. You know, I like the merge. I like Day One, different times. And to me, Day One is one of the most important days. And I felt like we got a Day One from Season One where people hadn't really – studied up as much. There were obviously some that did, but I mean, we barely got any strategy talk until like almost 45 minutes in. It, it just seemed. There are a few comments made that you could tell people knew what was going on, like Reed saying, you know, you got to learn fire before you come out here. But yeah. otherwise, it just, it really felt like season one, kind of, with so many new people, but I love the new people. I mean, I just love that it's all new people. But I mean, I did like the episode. I didn't dislike it. I just... It didn't blow me away, but I, but there were parts of it that we'll talk about that I really, really liked, and some parts that were just okay. So when I first saw you post about this, I, I don't know if it was in a message to me or a little group that we have that we message a lot, Yeah. Uh, that you said it felt so much like season one that you didn't like it, or did I misread that? No, it, it just, yeah, that was a little bit of my tone at the time. It was like after 28 seasons, it shouldn't feel like season one. To me, as somebody yeah. that would love to play it and that's seen every season, it just should feel like people are coming on saying, I'm ready to start working, ready to start aligning. And I just, I guess it was the editing. I'm sure some people were digging for idols and look, making alliances other than Jeremy. I don't know. Uh, I just, okay, see, I'm trying to be optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is this is kind of a laid back uh, cast that aren't doing very much, many exciting things, kind of like the first season. I think even the first yeah. season, people were more aggressive <laughs> through <Yeah>. day one. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I know I'm jumping ahead, but according to Dalton Ross, the uh, the tribal council was, it was the first tribal council in his nine times of going, either nine times or nine years of going, that he actually looked at his watch because he wished it was over. <laughs> <laughs> so, apparently there wasn't a lot of... Uh, a lot of stuff going on even there. So you so you may be right. It may be kind of a low key group. Right. You know, we certainly don't have any big personalities on there that are, you know, well, we voted one off. Yeah. You know. Exactly. Well, you and I didn't. Although That's we, right. although we chose her to be off first. Neither, I mean, we, neither did Josh, so we didn't do yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, neither did Josh. Much to Baylor's surprise, I bet. We'll talk about that later. All right, so that was your another your initial thought. I had another one. Um, are idols really that easy to find? Now, I don't think it's an idol now, but that was my initial thought. You don't think it is? No, and I have explanation for that later. Okay. I do not think it's an idol. Um, Sorry, my, my cord is bothering my leg. Okay. Podcasting um, at its best. All right, my next thought, or you want to finish your thought? You got more on that one. No, that, that's it. I did laugh a lot in this episode. I oh, yeah? A, a lot, yeah. There were a lot of a lot of different segments where I laughed. I laughed at people, 
Yeah. And then I, I, think I, I laughed. Have, yeah. Yeah, and then I laughed at situations. Yeah. That Val gave me one of the funniest moments I think of the whole episode. We'll talk about it later. Oh, but good. I, I, I did find myself laughing, which made it more enjoyable. Yeah, you know, so I I was, it was good. I have a clip later on in the show that I believe will be one of those moments. Yeah, where we'll laugh several times even as we listen. <laughs> yeah, it might involve Drew. It might. So yeah. All right. My third initial thought. We could do a whole show on initial thoughts. Uh huh. Uh, I'm glad we're not counting blurs. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how many there were, but one time I just kind of caught a glimpse of uh, of a blur, and it was uh, and it was um, Wes, I, I think. And I thought, my gosh, you'd have to just literally watch the episode trying to find blurs because it was so obscure. So I'm that, glad we're not counting blurs. That's funny because I, did, I didn't see any. I didn't. Yeah, Medicine. exactly, exactly. I'm also glad we're not counting First Fire because he's on your team. <laughs> Alec <laughs> First Fire. Well, I don't know. Drew says he did it, and Alec kind of gave it to him. Oh, I thought Alec was the one down there striking it. Uh, oh, well, so. no discussion necessary because no points awarded. That's right. That's right. So let's go to Day Zero. So what do you think about Day Zero? Do, do, do you like that? Um, I don't really remember Day Zero because it was basically the introductions, which I thought was fantastic. Oh, I loved it, yeah. He didn't even acknowledge. They didn't show him getting off the truck like no. they did um, in the previous season. They didn't show him having to go through the woods. They just showed him out there. They didn't show them getting dropped out of helicopters from 100 feet in the air. Right. No parachutes, no bungees. That's right. Even though he said, we dropped them on the island. <laughs> Only I get to ride in the helicopters. Yes. And I drove, and I rode around in the helicopter to tease them. <laughs> that was my first uh, comment, though. Was Day Zero combined with short introductions and brief yes. confessionals? Excellent. I like it. I, I really liked it. Us. Yep. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I found interesting was the note said it may be the only night you spend together. Well, yeah. hello. I I think if anything that gave them a heads up that they're probably not going to be on the same tribe, if they right. didn't already know that. And, uh, man, this is a time, like I, I have on my notes, so what happens on the first night, I'll go ahead and answer it. You start strategizing. You right. start talking about, okay, we're not going to be on the same team, so let, let's talk about the game. So you know. did, did you hear any of that? Uh, don't remember. I don't, I don't think, think we so did either. I mean, I, maybe it's just editing. I'm sure Val and Jeremy were talking strategy, and maybe Reed and Josh, but I really <laughs> just didn't hear anything. What I did like about the introductions and some of the confessionals were at camp. You could tell they weren't necessarily at um at the at day zero, but it was them actually. We finally got like a video interview on the beach. It right. wasn't just a pregame interview, a sitting in right. a nice palm tree chair or whatever. It was actually on the beach. So that was kind of neat. It was like their first reaction videos. Right. So I noticed that uh, Jacqueline and John were having a blast. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, like, this is like Survivor Jacqueline, you know, and of course, we, we see that later with, with John, that he's kind of a fun guy. Yeah. You know? I wonder what he's like 20 days in with no food. Well, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but, but yes, he is a know. very fun guy. And then John and Julie, not not quite so much. They weren't having as much fun. No. My only comment for those two I wrote was, do they really know the game? You know, the way they were talking about stuff and, you know, she's yeah. independent, she can work, and I'm like, I'm like, where's the game talk? Maybe this yeah. was me getting a little eager looking for game talk. Yeah. Oh, well, well David, you're just going to have to, you know, put a blanket over that eagerness. For five or know, six episodes. I don't know how much game talk we're going to get with this group. I just don't. I mean, look, we just came off of Kageyan, amazing season, one of the best seasons ever. So you're gonna have to lower your expectations a little bit. And we're also not gonna get any post tweets from anybody no. or anything put out there for public use. Or nobody's tweeting me as we, except for Billy Garcia. No one's tweeting me <laughs> as we <laughs> record like last season. That's right. Oh, you guys are idiots. What's your problem? <laughs> Are you watching the show? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, I have to make sure I say something about Julia later on that my wife wanted to make sure that I said. Julie or Julia? Sorry, Julie. Okay. So I want to make sure I don't call but her wrong. One idea. thing I noticed was uh, Julie talked about there's like crab holes everywhere, and Rocker just rolls his eyes like, oh, you. <laughs> Did she also say that snakes still do live in holes? Don't yes, they? yes. Snakes don't live in holes, do they? 
I've got proof that they do all around my property. Man. So then Baylor and Misty uh, enter the newest Planet of the Apes movie. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking... Their spaceship oh. is just down the beach. <laughs> oh, great. Kathy's going to give a get a clip of that. <laughs> that face. Yeah. Kat, if you don't know, Kathy Trantham is one of our listeners, and she also watches. I, I, hopefully she does both. and um, Or at least downloads iTunes. I don't care if you listen on iTunes. Just download it, assuming you're watching. But anyway, so when I make stupid faces like that, invariably they show up on Facebook. <laughs> so I shouldn't have done that. But anyway, Misty and uh, Baylor walk into uh, the Planet of the Apes movie, which I, which honestly I thought was really cool. It was, and it showed how close they were. I mean, obviously they're not going to let it get but so close, but I took from those two, they're more like sisters than mother-daughter. Yeah, but what about what Probst said, that Baylor has taken on the mother role? That was odd. It is it is odd because I that kind of caught me off guard as in there's something she said that um that he, he must have caught that we didn't in some yeah. interview or something. But she she does seem mature. Her video that you shared on our Facebook page shows yeah. she's like professional mature, you know, right. with music and everything. She makes her own videos and then there's mom who's been through divorces and yeah. you know, not to not to put that part aside, but I mean I just said these two and their connection, they're obviously very close. She yes. seems like they're her only child. I don't know if there's another child, but they're they they're more like sisters, and I could see them working together better because yeah. of the strife they've gone through in their lives versus other sisters. Right. See, yeah. I see, I saw it kind of like you did, more like they were sisters than Baylor was taking care of her mom. Yeah. I didn't see any indication that that Misty needed Baylor to take care of her, which is mm -hmm. what I got from a she's become a motherly figure to Misty. I haven't really, I didn't catch that so far. Yeah. So. Don't really have much about Dale and Kelly. Uh, oh, Drew and Alec. <laughs> the sibling rivalry is already there with the whole uh, fire starting and everything. Yeah. You know, Alec cutting off his hair. I, I guess hair ignites quickly. It's like the, the fine branches that they find, whatever they use, because it seems like they find some sort of straw or some sort of almost like hay yeah. to start their fires. Well, that and his hair. Pretty much, I guess what he's saying, his hair is as brittle as hay. I don't know, but he cut off his hair and used it. He sure did. He'll do yeah. whatever it takes. Which, to do. If if hair is required to start a fire, David, then sorry. <laughs> if you ever get on this we're, show. We're going to be cold tonight, fellas. Because <laughs> I don't have much to use. <laughs> Not unless you shave my back, girls. All right, that, that's gross. All right, forget it. So then you, let, let's go to Reed and Josh. I loved Reed and Josh. No, I I had something on Dale and Julie. Oh, did you? Um, okay. Dale and the, Kelly, maybe. Dale, no, Dale and Julie. Well, who are they? That's the father and daughter. No, that'd be Dale and Kelly. Who's Kelly? Is oh. it Kelly? Why do I have Julie? I don't know. <laughs> We're both due with our names. First episode. I sure do. No wonder Julie looks funny spelled that way. I don't understand. Anyway. What? Spelled K-E-L-L-E-Y? I'm not going to tell you how I spelled Julie on there. So anyway. I just wrote that Dale is a worker bee. He goes oh out there gosh, and it's yes. like he starts to build the, the beach. He starts to build a shelter. And Kelly's like, Dad, we're only going to be here one night. Don't wear yourself out. Yeah. Save yourself. So I said, oh, okay, he's going to be like that on the, on the tribe. Hey, uh, a, a quick shout out to um, Salami Five who just corrected me, and thank you so much. I don't know why I'm calling Missy Misty. Misty, yeah, I heard that too. I just didn't yeah. correct you again. Well, you should have corrected me. I just corrected you, calling Kelly Julie. So thank you, Salami. I don't know who you are, but thank well, you. I'm Maybe not seeing any comments yet. Why am I not seeing any comments? I don't know. Maybe they're not leaving any, but that, but that's okay. Oh, uh, where'd you so, see that comment on Twitter? Uh, she tweeted me, <laughs> so oh, thank, thank you, you very much. Well, you, you know, it's like I said about it's Dale. It's not Salome, is it? Well, probably. <laughs> Salome, Mitzi, Misty, Missy. We apologize at this point for all names that we misspeak. Yeah, Salome. Because there it's will funny. be more. Yeah, she's like, psst, it's Missy, not Misty. All right. <laughs> 
Yeah, Dale's got his list, and he like like I said pre preseason. Dale is a list guy. This is what I have to do today. This is what I'm going to do. He got to the beach. Boom, 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 boom. And Kelly's like, Dad, chill. There's a bag, Dad. We need to read the note. <laughs> yeah. The camera guy's over here. He's not following you. Yeah. <laughs> the camera guy's offering us candy bars. Right, anyway. So reading Josh, I love that they found a crab, killed it, started a fire. And I also love that Reed got Josh Flint for Valentine's Day. <laughs> That's some real Survivor fans. I love yeah. their excitement. They are on Survivor. They can't believe they're actually here starting the game. Yeah. I agree. And and you can just see the excitement, mm -hmm. especially Josh. Um, I must say, Josh received Flint much better than my wife received a hairbrush on our first Christmas. <laughs> A toiletry bag and toothbrush. She I can't imagine. Horrible. It was a horrible first Christmas. I cannot imagine. <laughs> she she bought me like this Nintendo 64 system with all kinds of games and everything, and and I got her you know a makeup brush that I was so proud of. <laughs> and some socks. <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> all right. Now We're I don't still wanna, on day zero, but I don't want to correct you. But are you talking about Reed's yeah. excitement or Josh's excitement? Because I thought Reed was the one that was super excited. I said Reed got Josh Flint. So I said Josh was excited that Reed got that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you meant out there on the on the beach. Yes. But yes. And I mean, Salome says, yes, David, you were correct. In <laughs> the name. So no way to go. Jo Val and Jeremy, how about the whole job rivalry thing? Completely competitive. That's, I mean, yes. that's the first thing I wrote down. I was like, gosh, are these two going to be like this all the way through the game? Yeah. Because she's well, not going to be able to hide, you know, that she's a professional or whatever. You know, if she's just like, oh, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Yeah. She is. He's not. Yeah. She She's going to be able to take it through the game. He's going to be like, I don't want to hurt your feelings. And she's going to be like, shut up and go over. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, she's like hardcore. I love her comment later. Yeah, I feel sorry for him because he's hurting because of what he did to me right now. Yeah. <laughs> and he's worried about the gas dude. back home. That's yeah. right. I'm surprised you didn't just tell him, suck it up. I'd do it to you. <laughs> you better beat me because I was going to whoop on you. That's right. And wasn't it fun kind of watching Natalie and Nadia go at each other again? You know, with the whole fire thing. I wrote that those two turn into eight-year-olds when they start fighting. It is oh, so funny. Cool. Their voices go up and they just go. You can see them as little girls. Yeah. Just, Stop touching me. I'm not touching you. Stop yeah. touching me. I'm not touching you. Yeah. I, I laughed. That's one of my laugh moments. I thought it was it hilarious. Is. And I felt like I was watching Amazing Race. Yeah, it was great. Well, and uh, we heard a lot about Amazing Race. Tonight, yes, we did. So. so before we talk about uh, Wes and Keith, I just want to play their little segment so we can hear what kind of amazing father I aspire to be to my children. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll get fired going all that for dark. Keep the bullets off of it. Father and son, Louisiana firefighters, Keith and Wes, share a love for their job and the outdoors. Wes, have you already lost a striker? But while Keith is nearing retirement, Are you kidding me? He's not yet ready to pass the torch to his son Wes. We lost our striker or our flint rock, and uh, I'm pretty sure it was him. Man, you got to quit laying stuff in the sand. You laid it down. This is my time to shine. It's what's what about my time? Is it over? Your with? time's been gone. Yeah. Been gone. It's, it's it's show time for me. I show time for you. I got a social that. aspect, physical aspect. Middle aspect, feel like I got it all. You're about as mentally strong as that rock. <laughs> <laughs> You're about as mentally strong as that rock. <laughs> <laughs> that was classic. I hope I hope we get Keith for a long time because I know. It's I mean, he's, oh wow! I, I I worked with his twin oh. about so many years ago, and I was working at another location, and I swear this guy could have been his twin. Same accent. Yeah. Same, same look, and it was like he just – I like Keith because he reminds me of my friend Jerry, and it's just it's just fun to watch him. I don't relate Jerry to him. Jerry Keel? No, not Jerry Keel. Oh, okay. Oh, no, 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 no. This is at work. Oh, Jerry okay. Keel was at church. No, this yeah. is at work. But um, what I wrote from that after I laughed, after yes. I got over laughing, then I rewinded it to listen to it again. I was, think you did it, Daddy. Was that, um, I think Keith will be better fit for the game when he's away from Wes and not being dad. 
when Keith has to socialize and he has to talk to people that are not his kids, I think he could be better in the game. But when Wes is around, he's like corrective dad. He's instructive yeah. dad. He's what about me, dad? You know, uplifting, he's, encouraging yeah. dad, uplifting, downlifting, whatever you want to oh, be. Sorry, I was <laughs> being <Fantastic>. facetious. <laughs> But uh, I'm like, man, he needs to get away from West because they're yeah. if they see him act like that around West, they're gonna, it could get condescending after a while, and it could. You're get right. Away. You're right. They they, they will um it, it will give them compassion towards Wes and some animosity towards Keith. Because we're gonna see in a few minutes how you treat your loved one can affect you in the game. Way to tease. Now Way we go to commercial. Yes. <laughs> Go to buffusa.com. Get yourself a buff. <laughs> Sorry, I was going to Hair for Men Club. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, Buff USA, thanks guys for the buffs. Yes. We have a link on our website. Go there, click on the link so they'll know that it's actually doing them some good to give us buffs. That's right. <laughs> All right, Heroes Arena, as Propes is so affectionately calling it now that the season is over. Day one, Heroes oh. Arena. Yeah, I wonder if they're gonna do the. Um, well, I guess we're gonna talk about who. I like it. I like his question. Who couldn't start fire? You know, which yeah, one? Yeah, of you, yeah. Which one of you failed with the free stuff that we gave you? Yeah. yeah. And it was the fire. Which, <laughs> which which pairs did not prepare for Survivor? Raise your hand, please. <laughs> because as Reed so eloquently pointed out, look, if you're gonna come on Survivor, you at least need to know how to make fire. And I thought, wait a stick at two of there, Reed. It's like folly, a survivor law. Good, we yes. finally do something survivor related. Yes. And Missy and Baylor were like, "Well, we were dealing with monkeys, so we yes. were not worried about fire. We were just worried about monkeys. We were scared. We had just seen, you know, attack of the killer monkeys, and not only that, but you've got attack of the killer flies. I felt well, like Probst I was in Virginia again. Oh my gosh, Probst is just surrounded by bugs. Yeah. It, it's like being in your backyard when the yellow flies are out. Shh, don't let them hear you. They're gone. <laughs> Please don't bring them back. Oh, man. Those things are horrible. But yeah, I was wondering if he was going to give it, we were going to get an introduction for the flies because they were just yeah. everywhere. You know, I was really impressed with Probst, although I don't know how many takes they had to do where he went. You know, <laughs> but, it, but I was pretty impressed that he wasn't slapping those flies because you know how it is when you're outside and flies are buzzing around your neck and your ears. Cause you knew, you know, he could hear them in his ears. Oh yeah, they were so close, and they, they were like right this there. big, and they were this big flying around his head. Yes. So, anyway, day one. Uh, let's see, Rosh and uh, Rosh, Reed and Josh, Survivor. You got in on the fire. <laughs> it was fun though, listening to Wes and Keith talk about their whole ordeal. It was, and they, everybody else you know? enjoyed it too. Yeah. So it was good to see him laughing and everything. Now, what do you think about Natalie and Nadia coming right out and saying? We learn from Survivor. I mean, we learn from Amazing Race. I asked Gracie at the first commercial break once that finally came around. I said, "What do you think? Was that a smart move? Was it not a smart move?" She goes, "She gave the she gave the right answer. I don't know. What do you think?" So, so I told her, "Is that I what said, you're doing to me?" Yeah. So <laughs> no, I told her, "I said they're going to get recognized sooner or later, if they're not already, because obviously Dale recognized them right away. Some other people did, if not all of them did." And why hide it? Just come out and say it, admit it, say that we lost bad. It's a non-factor because everything she said about Amazing Race was opposite of what Survivor is. That's so she true. made she made a good case to say, look, we're, we've been on there twice, we've lost twice, but everything about that game is nothing like Survivor. So don't consider anything about that game like Survivor. Well, so I, I thought that, it was no. Did they she say didn't. that then because I thought they said that later, but did they say it then? Um. Gosh, I, I can't remember exactly what she said at Heroes Arena, but just... I wrote. She said we learned on Amazing Race. Well, no, she said we learned on Amazing Race. It's social game and all that kind of stuff. I right. think what they realized two to three days in was this was nothing like Amazing Race, and she she kept Nadia kept saying it. You're right. All that I just said, she, she they they said throughout the episode as it got yeah. towards the first Tribal Council. But yeah. I, I still think it was a good to get it out in the open. Yeah. Don't hide it. Don't hide something that'll come back and say, "Why didn't you tell us that you were on another CBS reality show?" You know, yeah. that comes on Sunday nights and or whatever night yeah. it comes on. And oh, well, we just didn't more Fridays. But they were honest. But you yeah. see, that's another thing about the twins. They have no filter. Oh my gosh! When it comes to speaking, and that <laughs> yeah. was my wonder that we talked about in our preseason episodes. 
will they have a filter when they're separated? Because when they're together on day zero, it just flies out. And the other one takes it because she gives it right back. Right. But that was my thought on day zero. They're not going to be able to do that at the tribe, at the shelter. Right. Well, what what happens is, and it happened to Nadia, is they talk to other people like they talk to their uh, sibling. Exactly. Or like they've known them forever. Right. I mean, you know, you don't just go up to a guy like Josh and say what you said. Right. Because you don't know if he's going to appreciate that he didn't. No. Within three days, you, you still don't know somebody that well. No. So, so they did a random draw, divided them into tribes, and uh, also Wes recognized Rocker. No, Keith recognized Rocker right away. Yeah, Keith recognized him right away. Yeah, I know that guy. He played for the Braves, and he was a beep man. He, yeah, he was out too. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you like the Val and Jeremy exchange? I liked it, but for the same thing Prope says later, she's not hiding anything. You know, she's, I mean, she's, she didn't want to tell anybody she was a police officer. She was tough. She's coming right out, ready to roll just as much as he is. It's, it's almost funny because he almost kind of backs down a little bit. He comes back calm, but yeah. she, but not like her. She, it's almost like she's, see, she, she's so focused. Oh, that's what I wrote down. She seems so focused on him. Don't forget about the 16 people standing around you. Right. You, know, you got to make friends. You got to make allies. You're going to make enemies. Don't be so focused on that because these people right here could send you home. Right. And it's it's almost like she felt like she had to defend herself because Jeremy was saying, "I'm going to take care of her," and she's like, "I don't I don't need you to take care of me," you know. And she wouldn't just let it go. Yeah. You know, she has to make her point. Sounds so, like a a running joke they have often that she was right ready to come back to it. Yeah, but he seemed to be taking it. They both seem to be taking it rather seriously, though. Yeah. Like he was seriously saying, I'm going to watch out for her. And she was seriously saying, I don't need you to watch out for me. You're just a fireman. I'm a cop. Instead of saying, I'm going to watch out for him too. Yes. <laughs> yes. So uh, reward challenge. That platform that they had to drag, you know, because they showed yeah. us the reward challenge before they divided them up, I think. I don't know if they did or not. Oh, before we get think. there, just just to give a number, um, Koyopa. The average age of that tribe is 31. Okay. The average age of Hunapu is 34.2 to be exact. So they um, 34 because they have Missy, not Misty. Missy, and, yes. Thank you. And um, Keith, 53 and 47. Yeah. So the other one just has Dale and then Rocker and then the younger ones. All right. Well, thank you for that little bit of trivia. You're welcome. Yeah. I like numbers. So, yeah. So I was thinking that that platform – the way those spikes were on there, you would get the ring around one of them. And as you pulled it, it would turn it, and then the ring would come off. So that, that like the way that they designed that platform that, that you had to bring over. Yeah, you weren't guaranteed to stay on the on the on the little post, mm -mm. even if you got it on there. But before we go there, what about we're not going to talk about rock paper scissors? Well, yeah, that that was. Go ahead, talk about rock paper scissors. Dale broke the rule. Most men throw rock first. You always throw paper. In the first initial match, you always throw paper. But but that's all. That's all I had. Oh, you know what else they did? What? They went one, two, three. And they did it on three. On the third. Yeah, you're supposed to, I thought you counted three, then go. I always go one, two, three. Mm. Yeah, which one, is two, exactly three, <laughs> which is exactly what is what happened in the first lethal weapon. Oh yeah. Are we going on three, or are we going after three? Oh, or? the bathroom scene. Oh my gosh, that was so <laughs> funny. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. It's like, wait, why don't you go, or one, two, three, go, or yeah, dude, dude, it's your funeral. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> that was great. They also did it behind the car one time, and whatever. <laughs> anyway, so Jeremy wants this, and I thought Jeremy, no, no. I wrote in capital no, letters, no exclamation point. <laughs> I would not have volunteered. <coughs> I wouldn't have either. No. What if they had asked you? Do you feel comfortable doing it? I would have said, well, yeah, sure. Except you're taller. And look, I got a client. And here's the thing. If you're looking at the. Yeah, look at the challenge, right. Yeah, if you're looking at the challenge, you need a tall guy to do it. Right? And so you get the tall guy to do it or, or a tall woman to do it. Or at least somebody that can jump through that those through the rope maze pretty quickly. Right. 
give as so, much time as possible. I think they made a good choice, and I think John was also saying he could do it. John Sh- Mish, Mish uh, which, John. Which by the end of the ch- end of this episode, I thought he could too. But um, but yeah, I think Jeremy said I should do it. I can do it. I'll do it. You know, pretty much volunteered himself for it, and I thought no, but. I think yeah, it ended up being probably the best thing he ever did the whole episode. But anyway. But, but still, you look over on the other tribe, and what do you think Jeff is going to do? Yeah. I mean, he didn't do rock, paper, scissors within the tribes to see which two. It was to see who got to pick. So you think he's going to let you pick your opponent? Yeah, that ain't no. happening. That's why it's called blood versus water. Right. And Jeremy's – his demeanor didn't change yet because at first it was, I don't care who – I'm playing against, oh, and man. he's okay. Even whenever Val is mentioned, he's okay. They're okay fighting for reward. He doesn't mind beating her then. And as soon as Exile is mentioned, his whole demeanor changes. Yep, absolutely. And her demeanor doesn't. Again, a recurring theme here. Yes. And this is where Jeremy starts telling his personal story to his tribe through his emotions, yes. through his reactions, through his lack of words, which I thought was great. We finally get to hear somebody say, I don't have anything to say. Yes. <laughs> you know, everybody's got something to say to the camera, but Jeremy's like, yeah. I got no words. Yeah. So how do you think that went over with the female members of his tribe? Uh, I, th- I think they liked that. I think they loved it. Yes. That's a man that loves his wife and just is not afraid to sh- hide his emotions and just – when he doesn't have words, he doesn't have words. I right. think they respected him for it, and I think that comes back to help him later on. Yes. It certainly helped him connect with the women later on, for sure. Or now, that so, may have played a part of it. I, I think it played a part, yeah. yeah. Um, something we didn't, something we did talk about preseason with uh, Andy and others about throwing this first challenge. And I'm sure Steve or Andy brought it up or somebody else brought it up because I don't think I did, but we were talking about would you ever consider not sending, letting your spouse go to Exile Island? Would you consider throwing it, like pulling a Rupert, you know, and just letting letting them win? And at the same point, what's your tribe going to think about you letting the other tribe have reward? Yeah. You it know, I don't think we talked about that, and that's a really big thing right there. Yeah. Because Jeremy put himself before his wife, and they put his tribe before his wife. That's and because first, they're playing a game. On first day impressions, that's huge. Right. Yeah, if, if if you throw that challenge, then you're telling your tribe, I'm not here to play the game. Right, exactly. You, know, you you just can't do that. You have to win, or at least try. I mean, he, he would have had to sat there and twiddle his sums for a half hour anyway. Yeah. Lose. <laughs> so, but, but no, you just don't throw that challenge. That's kind of what I felt like Rupert did. He kind of said it's yeah. her turn to get, go through the game and get voted out. You know, I've had yeah. my turn. But I'm like, then you didn't come to win. No. No. Absolutely agree. Um, Probst has said to uh, Dalton Ross that because he had told Dalton that we were doing that they were doing Redemption Island, mm-hmm. that all those players had heard that before they went out. So they thought they were doing Redemption Island. They did not think they were doing Exile Island. So the Exile Island, and you can see it on their faces, was yes. a complete shock to them. We, we got a great reaction from Jeff announcing that. That was good. Yeah. So I like that. Lie to the castaways. That's good. Yeah. So I I, I like this challenge. Uh, it, it's interesting that Val was confused the whole time. Yeah. And and just really struggled. I mean, there, there was some obvious, like, why are you trying to climb over the pole from the outside? You're just going to put the rope back over the pole. She was having some major problems. Yeah, to, for me, I was thinking this doesn't look good for ch- future challenges. Yeah, you know, it future really tribe doesn't. challenges. There's, yeah, this doesn't put a good shine a good light. Whereas Jeremy just flew through the thing. Yeah, and she's my pick to win, and I'm beginning to. Uh, you no, know, by the end, I wasn't too worried about her. Well, by the end. but early on. She, I want you to hear what Probst had to say about Val. Okay. The wild card for me on this tribe is Val. I love Val pregame. I have no idea what she's doing right now. She's she's blabbering a lot of stuff that I couldn't even follow. She feels like she wants to be an outsider, keeps telling people she is an outsider, but nobody seems to be treating her like an outsider. She didn't get any votes. She's implied that she's found an idol. Or let's yep, what she yep. wants people to think. She said it was good, a good place for looking around for yeah, stuff. Yeah, right. 
So I don't know. I'm really curious. I'd love to go back to camp tonight with that shelter full of poison. Now, I realize that was recorded. Thank, thank you, Dalton, for letting us use those clips. I realized that that was recorded after Tribal Council. Right. But I just think it – I thought it was appropriate for right there. Well, from the beginning, she's like that. She doesn't yeah. hold back anything. I love when he said she's just talking and talking, and sometimes even I don't know what she's saying. Yeah. You know, if I don't understand what she's saying, then how are these other people going to understand what she's saying? Yes. Probst, Probst wins an award tonight for making a, a landslide victory – challenge sound like it's going great like yeah. it's close right he's pulling in his last one so is Val it's her first one but she's pulling it in <laughs> you know I mean so he was trying to help but I I'll give him credit that I'm not a fan of Exile Island I'm not a fan of separating someone on day one from their tribe and throwing them in a complete early disadvantage yeah but I am a fan and if you hear wheezing while I'm talking it's not a, a walking dead zombie coming up behind you. It's just me trying to breathe. I thought well, I heard something. It's me. Um, but I like that it's being used immediately in a threatening blood versus water way. Yes. You know, it's, it's completely... It, the, the reaction Jeremy gave is exactly what they wanted. Right, exactly. It's a, it's a great way to start the, start the season That's because right. we're going to see more. Yeah. And I like that they're putting someone from the other tribe on there with them also. I love that. I don't think it played out really very well this this first coupling, because I think Valve, you know, kind of took that opportunity away. Yeah. With the whole uh, clue situation. Yeah. But but I think in I think future people are gonna make some alliances and be talking game and stuff like that. We we got another moment of um, production. I think telling Probst he he spoke too fast. You know, Jeff said. It, Jeremy's going, I already got him yeah. picked out. Probst is like, whoa, 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 whoa. I got like eight more things to say. Hold on. He's like, I the rehearsed that line. Choose, the person you choose has to be known. Yes. Jeremy's like, I already got him. I already got him. Let's move on. Yeah. I got him. Yeah. I, was, I, I wrote down, Jeff had rehearsed that line. You can't interrupt him. Yeah. <laughs> but he did. No, that, that was funny. And what? He can start fire? Hello? Were you not listening earlier? Yeah. Jeff's like, now you know. He's the one that lost. It's not that he couldn't start. He, he lost <laughs> the item to start fire. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> um, I, it, it was. Now, why was Keith so? What, what? Why was Keith so emotional? I, I, I mean, you think we would know because he was asked and he apparently answered, but I didn't understand a thing he said. Uh, he I was understand. emotional. He said that I, I'm emotional for those two, pointing at Val and Jeremy. He and said I, that. And I, yeah. He also said other stuff. I don't think he knew why he was emotional. Oh, no, he probably didn't, but I think Val and Jeremy have been standing there for several minutes getting emotional, especially Jeremy, and I think everybody was probably emotional. And then yeah. to get picked, maybe he th saw it as kind of a, a pat on the back or, or I respect you pick, but looking at his tribe, who else would you pick? You wouldn't send one of the girls. You know, I mean, yeah. I wouldn't. They, they would bond, but, I mean, you're talking about helping his wife find shelter or maybe start a fire and... Yeah. I don't know. Looking right at it, I mean, Keith probably would be the one you want to pick. Plus, if you got to owe somebody, why not owe the guy that probably won't make it to the merge? You never know. That's a good point. See, I, I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't know who I would have picked. So, how That's ironic like, though that the firefighter picked the firefighter to go with his wife. There you go. Let's go to camp. What do you say? Let's go yeah. to Hunapu. Day one. They get nails, they get hammers, all that stuff they never got in previous seasons, like mm -hmm. season one, when they got an island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. John wrote, shows... Well, I wrote that... Um, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, John shows a little bit of his personality again. Yeah. You know. Um, I wrote, the tribe is grateful and thankful Jeremy stepped up. So this is where Jeremy's reward is actually coming from, from him volunteering right. to do this and be the hero in Hero Arena. And sympathetic that he had to go against his wife. Like, yeah. I, said, like I said earlier, he put the tribe and his game before his wife. Yeah. So And they, they appreciate, especially the women. The women, were, uh, Missy was one of the main ones saying, yeah. that was tough, I can't imagine. And, and I think it was somebody else said, well, we're all going to have to do it. You know, We're all going to be put in that situation. So yeah. but you did it first, you did it for us, and you won for us, and we appreciate it. Yeah, and apparently one of the people that doesn't watch Survivor said nobody saw that coming. 
<laughs> no, we, we sure We're on blood versus other. water. You're on different tribes, but nobody saw it coming. I thought we were just pairs. I didn't think they were going to put us against yeah. each other. <laughs> Poor Jeremy. I don't want to cry. The guys back home are going to think I'm going to get me for crying. They're, um... I know. I felt bad for him. He was speechless then. He didn't have much. I know. Sense. It's just. But it's I, I mean, how many confessionals did this guy get? Now, I, I realize Shayna. I'll tell you. A, oh, okay. I know. Shayna is using the same rules for confessionals that um, whatever that website is. What What's the name of that website? Uh, does she go to True Dork or Survivor Sucks? I can't remember. Survivor Sucks, maybe. Yeah. I don't remember. Jeremy but, had uh, ten. Ten. That guy had so many. Whose team is he on? He's on yours. Oh, yeah. I've, I've got to no, write that down. No, he's on mine. Sorry, he's no, on he's mine. not. Yes, he is. He's on mine. I need to write that stuff down. I mean, i got like five different fantasy teams I know. going. It's so confusing. <laughs> and then I'm in first. But anyway, um, also wrote about I just really think Jeremy scored a lot of points for yes. his tribe in the sense that he's in good standing for winning. He's also in good standing at with this tribe at camp. Because he didn't send any of them to Exile Island. They're all still at camp with Jeremy. Well, yeah, yeah, really. Yeah. yeah. So I already talked about how he made, made a, a good impact on the women. And um, what women wouldn't find that emotion to be honest and heartwarming in someone you want to trust. Right. He's got a great smile, and he just proved that he, he loves his wife more than anything. That's how much it hurt. And so he goes and gets three women. Did he get an alliance of with women, or did he get three separate pairings? No, because he told Natalie I I talked. To, he he told Natalie I talked to Kelly. So I know he told Natalie that. Okay. So I don't think he got three separate, you know, alliances. I think he gotcha. kind of was like, let's all, you know, because we got to have brains, as well as. I mean, if that was his his plan to make an impression on the women, and then. Group the women together with him. That's a great plan because it worked perfectly well, in this first episode. It did, except one of them's going to be gone soon. But anyway, which one? All right, I, I well, I picked Natalie to go, so I, I'm. She's picking, still in it. I know. I said soon. No, Nadia is gone, not Natalie. I wasn't saying she was. Oh, gone. oh sorry. <laughs> Look, I can't pronounce Missy, but I but I know who went when I know who went home. Let, let's go over to Coyopa because Josh is excited that he's got a machete. This was great. Josh was so excited. Davis that was that was Survivor oh, excitement. Was. That was Survivor. Yes. Yes. We're on Survivor, and I have a machete. Look at me. Watch me swing. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, you know Nadia, who has no filter, talks about everybody's age. Right away. Yeah. Hey, you know what? While we're here... Let's let's talk about how alienated the older people are. That's not what she said, but that's... But cool. she's pointing out their ages, and they're that's playing right. the age-guessing game, and yeah. who's violating rule? one of the most important rules of day one? Dale, sitting off by himself yes. in his shoes. Yes. But you if know, this over... is... Sorry, this is Dale. I mean, he works alone, or he works with only a few people. He's not really big into the social scene. He doesn't mind sitting by himself and fixing his shoes. Right. Well, except he kind of did. He was like, I'm kind of over here by myself. And I was thinking, well, get up and go try your <laughs> shoes on over there. Exactly. What a way to make an inroad with young people by going over there and joking about your age. Yes. And tell them what you do. Tell them how active you are and tell them how helpful you can be because later on they say, he's not going to help us in challenges. Well, he's pretty yeah. physically fit. He's pretty good. But they're not going to know that because you're sitting over there. Doing your own thing. Yeah. So much so that Baylor and Natalie and I forget who the other one was. <laughs> who is Allie? Is Allie. Allie. And, and Baylor yeah. goes, so what's the old man's name? <laughs> okay, one, he should have already told them. Yes, he should have already been over there telling them his name. That's pretty bad. Yes. And then Nadia says, I'm just going to call him Dad. I'm not yeah. going to worry about learning his name, even though Dad is close to his name. But yes. the old man and Dad, oh, that, that's not good. Yeah, yeah. That, that doesn't bode well for him. And, and then what are, where, do, where do we see him next? He's going to the well by himself. himself. Yes, and going to the well is supposed to be times to talk to people. Yes, tree mail and well. Yeah, Conversation don't to, pieces. Don't go to the well by yourself unless you have a clue. Unless you I, think, yeah. I think what he found was not the idol, but based on the clue we saw on Exile Island, I think that had an emblem on it. 
And on, on her clue, it had one emblem said dig and one emblem said water. Right. So I think that that emblem tells you where the idol is at your camp, either in water or you have to dig for it. So he found the clue that the handwritten clue refers to. That's what I think. You think he found a clue or you think he found the idol? No, I don't. I no, he didn't find the you, idol. You said he found a. Oh, he did not find the idol. No, he. Okay, if you go back and look at the clue. Yes. That Val found, it right. shows two circle emblems. Right. One says dig, beside it, and one says water beside it. I think that the emblem or the little medallion that he found has one of those emblems on it, and that. So, like, if Val would have found that, it would have told her whether she should be digging. Or whether she should be looking in water. That's what oh, I think. Oh, so you think I got you? So one clue is for one beach and one uh, one tr shelter, and one clue is for the other. Right. Although That's, that well, I don't know. I mean, they probably have them it, both at the same place. If you take just, a dig symbol and mix it with a water symbol. You have a well because you have to dig to get water, and that makes a well. And it's sitting on top of the well top. Oh, is I, that what you? Okay, so you think he did find the idol? Well, I, well. Is this the first time we've ever found an idol without instructions? I well, mean, without without a note yeah, saying but, you have found the idol. Yeah, but it's it, it's on a it's it's on a necklace hanging on the top of the well. What kind of hiding of idols is that? It must be pretty good because he's got thirteen symbols around the top of the well, and he's not really looking at them. All of a sudden, he sees this little necklace sitting on the handle. So I'm like, I was kind of laughing, like, did you not see the symbols? You know, when you're in Survivor and you see something that's not normal, you stop and look at it. Well, that's true. So, I mean, I don't know. I'm not saying it is idle. I'm not saying it isn't. But I think, looking, I went back and looked at the clue, and I wrote it down exactly what it said. And if you put the two together, which is dig and water, then you, that, to me that means well. So okay. somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Um, go to well, the well. You might absolutely be right. Maybe that's why she went to the well. Which means there could be a necklace of the water. water. So yeah. maybe he did find the, uh, find the idol. So if he did, boy. That's really I mean, hiding the idol out and open. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like a price tag is what it looked like. Yeah. Look, they left the price tag on this well top. Yeah. So anyway. All right. So uh, let's let's make fire. Again, Dale's by himself, and everybody else is over there trying to make fire in a different way, and Dale's by himself again. Of course, he, he did pick the easier way, in my yes. opinion, because they, when he finally makes fire... I think they're out in the water because they all come back wet. Yeah, I if think they'd all given up. Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, he said it took him another. Um, he said it took him another hour and fifteen minutes of sunlight to get oh, the wow. fire started. So I hope he doesn't have to read a clue later because those were reading glasses. Yeah. yeah. He admits. <laughs> I hope I didn't hurt myself later. Well, he'll just have to hold it out, you know. Yeah. Hey, can you read this for me? Hey, can you hold this by that tree? I need to read it. It says, congratulations, you have been elected to quit the game. You must now report to a cameraman and say you quit. <laughs> oh, man, that is good. So, But he does end up starting the fire, and he, you know, he thinks this has got him settled in the game for good. And I'm thinking, dude, you are putting way too much credit on this. To, to me, this is a wise adult but not a survivor player thinking this way. You know, somebody that thinks they've done something to help the people, you know, if you have a group of people at work and you figured out the reason to make their workflow go easier, I'm the hero. I'm not getting fired. Everybody's going to look at me and, and think well of me, but not in Survivor. doesn't matter what you do on day one. You could still be the person that goes on day two. Right. Well, that and um, using that scenario that, that you just did, you at work helped somebody just long enough until the fix came the next day, and then they don't need you anymore. Exactly. You see? So, I mean, he made a fire. He's not the only one who can make fire. They're about to get flint. Which they point out right in two days, yep. Right. As my wife said, you don't know that. They change up things in Survivor all the time. What if they're not going to get flint? Yeah, they change stuff within 24 hours. You never know. And you still kick the guy off, but you make sure he leaves his glasses. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you tap him on the back of the head as he's walking away and get to catch his glasses. That's right. Hey, before we go to Exile Island, did you see what uh, Shana put on YouTube? Jeremy had five confessionals for two points each, so he got ten points. Oh, then I read her column wrong. Okay. So, 
All right, Los Isle Island. They landed on Exile Island, which makes me think they put them on a boat, which is pretty, you know, that's what Michael Scoopin told us. They get on boats to go everywhere. Yeah. You know? But uh, it took them a while to find that main part of camp, though. Did you did you notice that? It seemed that way because it sure seemed like they didn't find it right away. Yeah. So how would you have handled the whole urn thing? Let's say you are, do you want to be Keith or Val? I'll be Val. Okay, how would you have handled it whenever you open it up and yours has a clue on it? I would hope not the way Val did. Because yeah. that was the funniest thing in the world to me. Val is a police officer. She talks to people that lie. She talks to people that have done things they're not supposed to do. And the rule in interrogation is when somebody asks you a question, you don't respond by re-asking the question. <laughs> ask me a question. <laughs> ask me a question. You want me to ask you a question? Do I want you to ask me a question? <laughs> that is the first sign that you're lying or hiding something. And she does it with the funniest smile on her face. What does it say? What does mine say? Is that what you're asking? What does mine say since yours says nothing? What does oh. this only thing that we could possibly be reading right now say? She was so caught up. She didn't notice his had nothing. <laughs> that was so funny. Yeah. You, you almost want to go, okay. It's almost like before you even open the urns, you go, okay, t tell you what. You go open your urn, I'll go open my urn. And then we'll decide if we want to talk about them or not. Oh, that's a great plan. Because I, I probably wouldn't have thought of that, and I probably wouldn't have thought of this. What she could have said was, wow, it's a map to a waterfall at my, in my camp. But then he probably exactly. would have asked to see it. You know, he might have asked to see that, but I think your plan is the best. But at the same time... She couldn't say that, David, because then he'd be like, well, what if I'd gotten it? That's what I'm saying. He would have asked to see it. He, or they're yeah. they're going to give me a map to a waterfall at your camp? That's a not waterfall to my camp? <laughs> There's two maps. We have an identical camp. That's right. They're mirrored. So, it's a palindrome camp. It's the same waterfall one in, in two camps. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, that's, that's funny. Oh, just something about my camp. Something about well, my tribe. If they had talked before, if they were already planning on working together, which Val was never planning on working with him, and Keith was so not into the game yet that he hadn't thought of it either, then 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 you approach it like, okay, let's just open them both, and we'll both look at it, you know, and then we'll both have the clue if if there's a clue, you know, if you're going to be working together. But they weren't planning on working together at all. No, because I wonder. If she thought at all that this was one of Jeremy's picks, you know, one of his alliances, one of his agreements or something, but it happened so fast, they didn't seem to be able to sit together, do much talking together, and it just. Right. I'm kind of understanding why. Obviously, she hit it. Why she wouldn't want to tell somebody the first day, but yeah. boy, it was. Had she been on there with somebody a little more survivor savvy, and not somebody that yeah. said, "Oh, there's something about her tribe. I, I more power to her. I don't want to go to her tribe. I want to go back to my tribe." Yeah. Oh, you have no clue that it was a clue. I would have called her out. Exactly. I would have been like, oh, come on, you got a clue. Let's <laughs> share it. And I would have been ragging on her for the whole two days. That's because you've seen every season of Survivor. You know, let's, hey, let's, uh, look, we, we can work together. I'll and, be eyes and ears on my camp. You be eyes and ears at your camp. I'll make sure your hubby's safe. You make sure my son's safe. You know, I'll, come on. That's a, that's a survivor strategist. And after she did the first mistake of repeating the question, then she did the second one of changing the subject immediately. Yes. Let's, see what, else is Let's go see what else is wrong. Stop looking at me. Let's go over there. Did you ask me a question? Let's go look at that urn. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what was your question? Oh, can we make fire over there? Oh, gosh. That was, but I, that was one of my funniest moments when she repeated the question back to him with that smile like, I didn't find anything. Did you? Yeah. yeah. That was so funny. All right, are you are you ready for the uh, clip of Drew and the whole uh, shelter thing? Yes, that's where I'm at. All right, here we go, y'all. This is kind of long, but it's it has so many funny things in it. In fact, I'm gonna play it where we can, I can pause it at any moment. Although I can't see you, so it won't matter. Where'd everybody else go? Jeremy and uh, I don't know. I didn't really want to, but I kind of was forced to step in and really take control of the construction of the shelter. Glad everybody's helping me with this. Uh, better get lots of coconuts tonight. Yeah, they better hook us up, huh? It was a lot of work. I kind of built the initial foundation for our structure. It's definitely important that we had something levitated off the ground and could give. Um, did yeah, I hear that correct? 
Did I hear that correctly? It's the first ever levitating shelter in Survivor. <laughs> What's the hovercraft? Is it the hovercraft? Yes. The hover shelter? It's a hover shelter. I go it back to the... levitated. I, I was muted. I go back to the beginning where he said, where did everybody go? On day <laughs> one, you don't lose everybody. You know where they go because you better be with them or they're going to be talking about you. He's That's like, Dale. <laughs> well, it looked like it was just him and John and then Missy... Missy walks up. But I just thought, I, I paused it. I went, Connie, did he just, they have an elevated shelter that's levitated. All right, here levitated. we go. Nice little cool breeze from the ocean. It's going to hold people really strong. It's the plan. Okay. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm, No, I like I'm, it. Hey, I'm married and I know what okay means. Such a woman. Is this going to work? <laughs> Do you know what you're doing? Because I don't think you know what you're doing. That was David, y'all. That was not me calling. Sorry, that's, such that's, a my, that's my wife. Because I'm uh, not Mr. Construction. But is this going to work? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's just a smart woman. That. That's a smart woman. Okay. Okay. Exactly. Okay. I'm not sleeping on it. So. Yeah, really. All right, let me back up a little bit. No, I like About it. Passed out trying to make it. So I hope it works. <laughs> I hope the uh, tribe appreciates the hard work and effort that I put into the shelter. Look at that, dude. What are you, Drew? You know, it actually was a successful model for the last few years. What did that have to do with it? <laughs> wait, wait, come back, come back. <laughs> I nearly passed out putting it together because I'm used to pumping 500-pound dumbbells all week long. That's why my arms are so big. And I'm, I know I'm joking on Drew, but... This reminds me of the scrawny kid that says, I just got back from the gym, had a six-hour workout, nearly passed out. Yeah. Well, yeah. then you stop and drink some water. But he passed out from building the shelf. <laughs> Here we go. I'm kind of not a big shot in Europe, but, you know, I'm sure my face is around some different places. But I'm not here to be a model at all. I'm here to be a survivor. Bang. That's totally really too awkward. charged on the shelter thing. I had never built one before. but I it. Boom. Oh my god. I'm not sure why Drew thinks he's in charge. He's a little bit too arrogant. Um, bless his heart. Dude, I'm a genius. Being a woman and who I am, I mean, I'm dating John Rocker, and he used to play in the in the major leagues. He is type A with a capital A. Oh, so I understand the dude mentality, and Drew, I mean, he's just kind of like a young, dumb guy. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> Not gonna say you nailed it, but she nailed might've. it better than he did. <laughs> yeah, you might have. <laughs> oh, That's I good. love that. She's like, I'm married to John Rocker, so I recognize this kind of stuff. This yeah, stuff. but you know, she, I, but she is. She's used to Type A guys, big time. But you know what you do with those guys? You agree with them. You. Pat him on the back. You say, you sure yes. did. Just like Johnny. Good response by John, even though John was doing, seemed to be doing as much work. But Drew said, yeah. I took control of that thing and got it up. And John's like, you sure did. You rocked it. That's right. So and then Missy John. was like, oh, oh, I like it. I like it. I think you did a good job. Yeah, I'm glad Missy you was doing the whole mom, pat you on the back thing. Right, exactly. Drew, Drew, Drew's going to be like, you know, like, like, like the husband who – Opens the front door and says to his wife, who's paving the front uh, driveway, <laughs> he's going to be like, hey, I put my dishes in the dishwasher. Aren't you going to say thank you? <laughs> That's Drew. That's Drew. I know. I know where you're going. Anyway, I, I wonder, because I, I know guys like that. I wonder, I'm one of those that believes 90 Eight percent of what's said in episode one is going to come back to bite him in another episode. If this is going to come oh. up about the shelter, if somebody's going to complain, and he's oh, going to yeah. talk about what he did for it and how he did yeah. it, they better be bringing back coconuts. Yeah. I know they're out swimming, but they better be bringing back coconuts to yeah. feed us, us men that build shelters. Someone will say, "I'm uncomfortable," and he'll go, "Stop complaining about the shelter that I made." Y'all are out there swimming. I'll, I nearly passed out twice building this shelter. That's right. Oh man. He's fun to listen to. He is. I thought Alec would be a little bit more fun, but I don't think ha Alec hardly got any confessionals until no, the end. But yeah, Drew was funny. Yeah. Wes, by the way, talk. I'm about to sneeze. Wes 
is who Dwayne is about to talk about. Oh, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> Wes knows Rocker, but doesn't know how to spell it or doesn't know how many letters are in the name. That was hilarious. Because you know Rocker's going, oh, he's about to call me out. Does it have five letters in it? And Rocker's like, oh, no. Maybe he's he not about to call me out. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't know who I am. <laughs> Got like twelve. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. What what I thought was funny about that whole thing was Rocker did not fess up about who he was until Wes said, you know, he was the man back in the day when the Braves were awesome. He was the man. And then Rocker goes, Yeah, I'm that man. <laughs> you he got narrowed, me. Wes narrowed it down to every little detail he could give except for the jersey number. I mean, he narrowed it down to when he was a fan of the Braves. Before they were good, then they got good. But but this 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 should kind of be a lesson at the same point of it's one thing to call out the twenties because everybody knows they're an amazing race. When you recognize a celebrity that might still have money, you know you're also putting a target on yourself that you could be a threat to that person's confidentiality. Because Wes thinks the two Southern boys are gonna bond now because Wes is like you know because I played baseball so we got a connection. Yeah, you played baseball. <laughs> <laughs> where there's chain link fences, and, and and where you get a free drink if you catch a foul ball. Yeah. But John played for millions of dollars. Yeah. Yeah. You know, at a different level. So I mean, you did play the same sport. You can talk about it, yes. But I think Drew is a Wes is a little blinded by the celebrity light. You know, I yeah. I know a celebrity now. We're gonna be buds. We're both Southern guys. We we we're gonna get along. Yeah. And then they flip the rockers like I might have to send him home. That's right. You know, I don't know if I can trust him right off the bat. You know, he says. So take this as a lesson, future Survivor players. If you recognize somebody out there playing Survivor that's a celebrity, you might not want to recognize them too quickly or too or out loud. Yeah. All right, let's move to day three. Sure. Because we didn't see anything of day two. Correct. I mean, I'm, I'm sure they were there. Oh, yeah. That was the day they had off. No cameras, yeah. no talking. No talking. No talking. This, this is when Josh gets the uh, title of the show. Poison Eye. Yeah. I I personally didn't think it was the sap. But I guess maybe it was because he got better, I guess. And he was the, I guess, the only one. I wonder if it was an allergic reaction to the or sap. Or it got in his eye. Maybe it didn't get in anybody else's eye. True. But he, he did say, aren't there things out here that we're not supposed to be messing with or poisonous? I'm like, didn't you yeah. people pay attention to the video? Yeah. On the boat before you got dropped yeah. off. Right. And, of course, this freaks Alec out, you know. Man, there could be like pumas out here, stuff I don't even know about. Because I heard they filmed a scorpion somewhere, and then they show the scorpion clip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, so so they get all the green stuff off the roof. I don't have anything I'll say about Ko Ko Koyopa at that time. I was trying to find a connection between Puma and Baylor, because when he said Puma, they showed Baylor. I'm like, hmm, nah. Well, at the very beginning of the show, when they said the sole survivor, they cut to Val and Jeremy. Well, yeah. All right, Hunapu, more howling monkeys, and John does a really good. John Mish does a really good imitation of those howling monkeys. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then a good imitation of a goofball when he says, "I wish I had a tail." Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. a good imitation. Now, do you think, like you said, the dad comment coming back to hunt him later or bite him later? Do you think? The dad thing is going to be a an issue later on in the show. Only in the sense that when I heard the tease, he could uh, be like Jenna did at All Stars and want to leave. I don't think he will. I don't think he's the one that quits. But just that, like, yeah, exactly what you're saying. That's come up for a reason. I mean, is he going to confide yeah. in somebody and tell him that? You know, is that why he's having a bad day? Because when my dad got diagnosed, I wasn't going anywhere. Right. So I, I mean. He went to his dad, got his dad's blessing. He wants to be home to watch it with him. But that's got to be hard. So he's yeah. going to have those moments where he sits back. But, yeah, I, that's obviously, to me, going to come up at some point. Yeah. How it's going to come up is interesting. My first thought was Jenna when she left because of her mom being sick. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, let's get to the immunity challenge, which was, did, did you like it? Did you like the immunity challenge? I did. I especially liked the end. I have to say, I, this was one of my favorite early challenges. Yeah. Um, I like when they use water, 
But this whole thing was a team challenge. Even the puzzle was a team yeah. challenge. I really liked that that part of it. I uh, did you see Reed flying through that thing? It was John. Oh, it was John I, Mish. Are you sure? I thought I saw yeah. Okay, it was John. Okay. Okay. Did you see Josh come up through the dirt and say, "What was that?" <laughs> As Mish yeah. and John went flying by. I mean, my first thought when he, when I saw that, and I think I saw it on the clip that was on our Facebook page in CBS.com, was in Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes, they had the guys in the monkey costumes and the uh -huh. chimpanzees. They put them on a on a speedy treadmill under the sand so that it would look like they were running yes. on the ground faster than the horses were carrying the generals. Right, right. And that's what it looked like. That John I was know. I'm pretty sure it was John because he was like in the front of the pack, and he got to the end first. He okay. just blew through that little maze. I'm that like, was good amazing. gracious. That was amazing. That was awesome. If you have, if you didn't catch that, you need to go back and watch that. Yeah. Folks, that was just incredible. So that was a lot of hard work to get to a puzzle that literally took them hours to do. According to Dalton, who was there. Oh, really? Dalton said the whole crew could have went to Starbucks or someplace to, really? and, and come back. And yes, I know there's no Starbucks in Nicaragua. That's my yeah. point. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know I love Dalton's. Uh, wow, I didn't articles. know that. Yeah, so apparently that thing took forever. It I really was the it. hardest puzzle ever. I liked it, and so much for getting there first. Yeah, we talked about that earlier. It didn't matter, yeah. but even getting to that point, I um, Reed might have been Spider Man, but Josh can scale a wall with the best of them. Yeah, he was flying up that wall. That was impressive. I liked Rocker's way of. Yeah. Putting himself at the bottom and launching people up there. I thought that was really yeah. neat. That's what I liked about it. It was You had to work as a tribe to get up the walls. Well, look hard. what Rocker did. Rocker uh, does the shoulder thing with a baler, which I yes. want to talk about that in just a second. Mm -hmm. He does the ball and rope, yes. and he lets everybody climb over him. I mean, he right. was integral. Yes, vital. Integral part of yep. them getting up to that puzzle first. Mm -hmm. So... Absolutely. Now back to the untying of the puzzle pieces or whatever it was they were untying, right? right. Um, my wife had a very good point. Rocker and Baylor did it the right way. One girl, one guy, she does all three. Yes. Right. Because when you do a different person, number one, you're switching people. But number two, that's a new learning curve every single knot. Exactly. You know? So way to go, Connie. Good call, girl. I'm sure you would have said it, but I, I hadn't thought of it. So. No, I, I was baffled why the, why the Hunapu wasn't looking over there and saying, hey, they're just using one person. Yeah. Now, when you watch the uh, the um, what they call it, the Dream Team, they had different people in each bag at the same time. Oh, really? They sure did. Well, but they, they, you know, they often change the rules after the exactly. Dream Team goes. Exactly. And they might have thought, you know, since it's going to take them five hours to do <laughs> <laughs> to the puzzle. <laughs> Let's at least make this first part five minutes longer. That's right. So. That's right. And then we get to um, to the ball toss. And this is the the this is a learning curve. And I wonder. I didn't really catch it visually if if Keith did this, but by watching Rocker, you learn immediately. You're never going to toss that ball up there. You have right. to you have to twirl it. You have to do the lasso. You're not going to be able to toss it by hand. A big guy like Rocker, if he can't even hit the hit the the two poles, there's no way Keith or somebody else is going to be able to throw it up there. And right. Keith immediately comes up and starts twirling it. Yeah. Yep. I was, I was impressed. That was good. And then Rocker obviously says, oh, that's how we do it. Yeah. Now, if you notice, he's he's twirling it on his right side the first time. And then when the edit comes back, it shows him on his left side, and then he gets it. So I don't think he got it on his first toss, but it looks like he might have gotten it on his second toss. Oh, yeah. Time. I don't think – yeah. I think it took him several tosses. Yeah. But that I like that. That was neat. Yeah. So, what the only thing I didn't like about the immunity challenge is they're playing for the creepiest immunity idol ever in the history of Survivor. <laughs> I bet they don't think it's creepy. That that idol would go in a on the other on the other side of the tree, facing the other direction. Remember whenever you came to my house, and we had that little bathroom that was underneath the stairs. Yes. And we had that little boy angel thing that is kind of looking up. And you came out of the bathroom and said, 
why do you have a little boy angel staring at me while I'm going to the bathroom? He's an angel observer. You don't <laughs> need that in the bathroom. And, and you turned him around, remember? I sure did. You turned him around. And Connie saw that idol. She said, that's just creepy. I would That thing would never be looking at me in the face. Hey, Jeff, can you just bring that to the next challenge? We're not going to bother taking it back. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want that thing getting up and walking around our camp. Yeah. So what do you think about... A, uh, a challenge like this where there's so much effort at the beginning and it's all for naught really. I mean you can literally just walk through the beginning and 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 the puzzle is is the great bring it all together at the end. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I like the fact that it was so physically exhausting. It should be. The first challenge should be this exhausting because it should be when they have their most energy but you're right. You know, after getting through all that, well, it could be those extra three minutes that you get that makes the difference, but for them it just didn't. Well, okay, maybe if the puzzle only takes 15 minutes to do. Correct. But if the puzzle takes two hours to do, then really, ultimately, that first five minutes, I mean, they didn't gain anything those first five minutes, or they would have solved it in 10 or 15. Right. So, uh, you know. No, but you're right. What's the use of, of hustling yourself up there if you're just going to have to take two hours to do a puzzle anyway? Right. So, so my question is the design of the challenge. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, here. I mean, I understand we're you know Monday morning quarterbacking here, but or Friday morning or Tuesday morning since yes. football's on all the time now, which I love. Yes. Um, but it just seems to me like make 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 the puzzle not a two three hour puzzle. You know, so maybe I mean, they didn't think it would be a two three hour puzzle. I mean, surely the dream team had to have had taken a long time to do it. Yeah. I mean, this, I mean, the guy said, "This is the hardest puzzle we've ever done." Now he said they were fifty pounds, but they didn't look like they were fifty pounds. Wow. They but did see, not I, look like they were. 50 I was looking to see if Missy got into the puzzle challenge because she said she does puzzles. Right. But the fact that she didn't made sense. Basically, if you're if you're touching the puzzle pieces, you're just the arms and hands. Right. You don't need to be forming the puzzle. Let the five people standing behind you do the puzzle. And I love that part of the challenge. Those people, those five are so vocally active to help the four. The four were just the movers. They were just right. the arms. And I really like that part of the puzzle. Yeah. All right. So we, really quickly, we have a really quick thing back at Hunapu, and it's just Jeremy telling Keith, I owe you, I owe you. And Keith is breaking a cardinal rule and not going, yeah, you're right. Instead, he's going, oh, no, man. Just, you know, I mean, come on. Say yes. Exactly. Exactly, because Josh will show that later. Keith should have yeah. said something to the effect of, well, what's your plan? You got a yeah. plan? I, I, want, I want to be in your plan, Jeremy. I know you owe me, but I want to be in your plan. This is right. what, what you do when you come back from exile. Yeah. Who do you have? Obviously, Wes is the one that watches Survivor yes. and Dad tagged along. Yeah, because Wes didn't watch Amazing Race because he didn't even think about that later on. But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, shooting squirrels. So we're back at Coyopa, and Val is going to the well. Oh, one more, one more thing. Sorry. Oh, Sorry. okay. Go ahead, uh, buddy. If Keith saw Kageon, if he was sent the DVDs and, and crash course that, he would know that Survivor is not a brotherhood. No matter what your occupation, it is a game. Um, it, it's it's a game because the police officers didn't stay together in Kageon, yeah. so it's not yeah. necessarily a brotherhood you can trust. I love what he said. Give me a day or two to figure it all out. Yeah, I'm like that might be all you get. That because may be all you the get. next challenge, you could be gone in two or three days. Yeah, yeah. Connie was saying, you know, he's right though. It's a brotherhood. And I said it wasn't like that on. Oh no. And she said it was like that on Akagayan. I said it was for her. It wasn't for him. Right. It wasn't for Tony. Okay. And then she wasn't even going to vote that way. Sarah went the other way. Yeah. So. So anyway. So uh, Rocker says, uh, welcome to Camp Val. Right. I don't know if you caught that. Well, what's interesting about that, and they didn't show us, is Val recognized him. Oh, no, In I didn't see that. pre-show interviews, mm -hmm. you know, she recognized him and, and said he's going to get himself in trouble with his mouth. Yeah. So, But it almost was like she didn't have any – I don't know. I didn't really see her connecting with anybody back at camp. No, it was like she was the outsider, like Probe said. She's yeah. like an outsider and still an outsider, and she's like the one that went to exile. And yeah. now she's got to find her place in there. And I don't know. I would have. I would have thought we might not have seen all of her scrambling. Yeah. But if, she, but knowing the game, like she sounds like she does, 
she pro- she might have come back and started talking to different people. Definitely start with the women. Yeah. Yeah, you because know, you might I, not make inroads with men. I think I might actually take her off of my pick to win on the uh, fantasy pool. Oh yeah. On the office pool. Sorry. Yeah. On the office pool. So. So anyway, we got uh, Dale asking Nadia about Amazing Race, although he asked Natalie, but Natalie wasn't there, so Nadia answered. <laughs> correct, correct, correct. <laughs> right. Well done. But I didn't really think that had, I didn't really, you know, that's where we hear her talk about how in the Amazing Race they tell you everything to do, and here this just, here's the island. Right, no rules. She said that at tribal council, but it's basically the same thing. But as we know from Survivor editing, that might not even have happened at that moment. He could have asked it at a totally different time, but it fit right. to what he was about to start talking about with the right. guys. Right. And you know what? If I'm Dale, I'm looking for anything. Anything. Dale, Very it, good. Absolutely. That is a prime thing. She was on Amazing Race. Let's get her out of here. Exactly. As soon as he saw her, and or as soon as they lost, I could see Dale working it in his head. Right. If he should have been working it. What can I use on somebody? Ooh, she's a reality star. She's played That's a game right. twice. Got, she's my target. She, I've yeah. got the best case against her, so let me take it to the fellas. Yep. All the fellas except Rocker wasn't there, but Rocker said that in whenever he voted, yeah. I think. So, uh, yeah. But it was interesting. All the guys were talking and Rocker wasn't there. Yeah. He was probably off doing something. Obviously, he was off doing something. And Josh <laughs> says, of course you say yes. Exactly. Yes, again, Josh is a, a, so, a student of the game. Sarah, Keith, always say yes. Yes. What's the three-letter word? Yes. yes. The answer is always yes. Another word, add another S on it. Josh is like, I don't care what you ask me. You're coming to me. I'm saying yes. That's yeah. what you say is yes. Then you walk away and find somebody else to talk to. He even says yes whenever Nadia calls him one of the girls, even though he hates it. Exactly. He's... Uh, like him even more. Yeah. He even like threw a little stereotype in there, you know? Yeah. And then, I, but I like how, like, you're right, Dale goes right after the easy pick. You know, hopefully we won't lose next time, but let's go after Nadia. I mean, I've seen her play The Amazing Race. I don't know if you guys have, but there's, he starts throwing out terms from Amazing Race, oh, yeah. with U-turns and the backstabbing. She's done this. We know she'll do it. She'll do whatever it takes to win. I, I, I want to backstab her before she backstabs me because I know she's a backstabber. So I won't be one until I have to do it to her. But we already know about her. Wes goes, oh, I didn't even think about the Amazing Race. Yeah. Well, Dale says, that's why I'm older and wiser, and I'm here to remind you of it. You know, I mean, it wasn't really a hard crew to convince, though. Other than Josh, you know, I mean, let's just be honest. Yeah, Alec and Wes. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't that hard of a argument to convince people to do. And we both agree. So yes. So, uh, what they don't, what what the girls don't realize, is that Missy is going to do whatever Josh does. Not Missy. Baylor. Baylor's going to do whatever Josh does. At least she didn't say Bitsy. Okay. So. Yeah. Well, well, that comes after Val gets all the women together. Right. Val. I know. That's why I'm oh, yeah. saying the women all got together, but they don't realize that Baylor is connected to Josh. Okay, now we have the two smart people of this tribe, Josh mm-hmm. and Baylor, because I, th- I think that when Baylor hears Nadia say, well, I've got Josh, you know, he's spoken to me, we've talked, and... And she, and she calls him one of the girls. Exactly. And Baylor says, huh, she's got Josh, so if Josh is going to join us, I need to talk to Josh, because Josh could be the flip between the two groups. And yeah. she goes, what we saw in the edit, she goes right to Josh, very smart move. Love right. that move from Baylor. And yeah. she says the right thing. Well, how are you going to vote? I want to vote with you. Right. I, I don't care who we vote for. I just want to vote with you. And I think those two are the ones that end up decide, making the decision. Right. Which really, I mean, let's, which is interesting because she obviously went into tribal council thinking that Josh was going to vote for Nadia. Right. It sounds right. like Josh, Josh said, let's go, Nadia. Right. And then she but agreed. A, but apparently, uh, Dalton said this to um, to Probst that something because he could hear we haven't heard all this yet but in his interview with, with Probst he said that he heard Josh say that he changed his vote to Baylor based on something she said at Tribal Council 
I think he was standing by the voting table, and that's yeah. what. Yeah, he heard and, his testimony, and, right? And Probst said, "Well, I don't know what that was. I can't figure that out. So who knows why he voted for Baylor? But you know, Baylor's got to be going. What? Wait a second. Why did you do that? Maybe that's why Josh thinks she's the second smartest player and wants to put her on edge. And, and then he can, but he can go to her and he can blame Nadia. He can blame one of the other girls or one well, of the. That is he, true. he can blame anybody and say, "I've got your back." You know, yeah. I, I really think Josh and Baylor are tight, but I think Josh wants to keep tabs on Baylor, realizing that she's right. smart. She said the right things. I want to vote with you. Yeah. So, and it, it, it's also smart, Josh. Set it up the way I think he wanted it to go by picking Nadia and telling Baylor that, and then he got to do whatever he wanted. Right. Well, we might as well. We're at tribal council, so we might as well talk about it. Oh, that's right. We are, aren't we? Yeah. Nadia's walking um, away. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I I want to play the clip that made me laugh. Apparently, it was the most exciting part of tribal council. Okay. Nadia, give me the vibe of this tribe. Um, I feel like we've been getting along so well since day one, and suddenly we have this huge decision to make that none of us were ready to make this decision so fast. But yet, I think you have to look at players' attitudes, what their physical capabilities are, and, you know, I grew up just knowing to keep going, don't quit, things are tough. Are you going to be sad, or are you going to put a smile on your face, make the best of the situation, keep going? So make lemonade out of lemons. Make margaritas out of lemons, preferably. <laughs> and I feel like that's what can get a tribe through hard times. I thought that was hilarious. Yes. <laughs> well, preferably margaritas. Yeah. Not if you, lemon. If you got the right materials, right. right. Yeah. Again, you know, she's that that's the fun part of her. And and I, I think if she wasn't an amazing race star, I don't think Dale would or anybody would have went would have targeted her. Because right. I bet she was fun at camp. I bet she was a, a good laugh at camp. Yep, and she's so, strong. She would be, would be good in challenges. Yeah. I think they would have gone for Val if it hadn't been for Amazing Race. Yeah, but I um, one thing that seems to be a rare talent at tribal councils, and it, and it could be just what we're hearing in the edit, but you need to, when you're, sorry, when you're answering Probst's questions, you don't want to be too obvious as to who you're talking about. You know, talking about people that don't do as well in challenges. You know, and of course they show us Dale. And he kind of looks over. She's talking about me. You know, you, you don't want to answer exactly giving away who you're going to be voting for. Because yeah. it's, it's never a done deal. So you got to be right. sneaky. You know, giving probes his answers back. But I didn't, that's funny that you said that um, Dalton was looking at his watch waiting for this tribal council to end. Yeah, well, Probst even said in that in that right after tribal council interview, there, there was like no arguing, there was no trying to save ourselves, there was no it was hard. Yeah, no scrambling. To, yeah. yeah, it was just kind of mm, we're here. Are, are you guys just ready to vote? Are we, are yeah. we done? So. Yeah. So, uh, Val was talking about how stressful it was and Val, you know, did the whole it was okay being at Exile Island, you know. Um, I got time to explore. Right. You know, that Val, Val kind of strikes me as the person who's trying to play the game a little too hard, which is so but, upsetting to me. Especially when nobody else right now is really playing the game too hard. Yeah. Too much yeah. at all. Yeah. Because Josh picked up on it. Baylor probably picked up on it. Yeah, but it's I just not. Else. Yeah. For some reason, it, it doesn't feel natural. It, it doesn't come across as like it's coming ac as it's a natural thing. It's 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 like it's pressed. It's like it's pushed. It's like she's saying what she thinks is supposed to be said at this point, but it doesn't need to be said at this point. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. It's just the way it's hitting me whenever she who, says. It. Who are you wavering towards? Uh, what do you mean? If if you don't if you take your pick off Val, who are you leaning towards? Oh, I hadn't I hadn't thought about it yet. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I really like Josh. I think Josh could win it all. Well, if Reed doesn't get any confessionals next week, I'm going to be worried. <laughs> yeah, really. He didn't get much of me. anything. I know. <laughs> oh, man. Who all did not get any confessionals? Do, do you have that? In I don't have the full sheet in front of me now. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I don't think Jacqueline got one unless it was on... Yeah. Uh, I think she might have got one on day zero. Yeah, it's like a 48-page document, right? Yeah, it's it's pretty wide. It's yeah. pretty awesome, but it's pretty wide. Yeah, it's awesome, but it's like stretch it out across your living room. So I'm not going to be printing it up ever. 
Yeah, I can dance my. I think everybody at least got one. I would think because on day zero it seemed like they heard from both people. Well, yes, that is true. That so. Is true. All right, so uh, Wes does say that Josh is the most well liked, which I think Wes is true. Wes did, you know. Yeah. But what what's interesting is he didn't say it like Josh is a threat. He said it like, and that's why I like Josh. Because he makes me feel good. I feel comfortable around him. Yeah. He understands what I'm going through. With yes. my dad, who says I'm an idiot. <laughs> Yeah. I don't want my dad to join our tribe. Yeah. All right, it's time to vote. Nadia's voted out. For some reason, Josh votes Baylor. I don't know when we'll figure out why. We'll hear at some point. And four guys in Baylor vote Nadia, which is just why I think that um, Baylor was not going with the girls. She was going with Josh. Yeah. So. Which I think was smart. What, you know, it means there's not going to be an all-girl alliance with, with Baylor around. Right. So, All right. You want to talk about the super tease? That was a pretty interesting tease. Yeah. We got, we got a possible quit. Mm-hmm. And we got some people that are glad they're gone. And it's not Keith because he said, I'm glad he's gone. Mm-hmm. And uh, Julie's upset about John. She, he does something that ticks her off. So it sounds yeah. like they get a reward duel. Yeah, Julie says, crying to Missy, I feel really deceived by John. Yeah. Yeah. It could be interesting. Kelly said, I cannot believe he lost the Flint. So I I can just almost promise you that's uh, Wes. Because they showed the whole Flint thing, you know, on day zero. Oh, Kelly's not on Wes's team. Might be Reed. I'm sorry, I'm Keith. sorry. Keith. Keith. Yeah. I was still have to look at the tribe pages that you I made. was looking at Jacqueline and thought Kelly. Yeah, yeah I still look at the pages. Um, I like what Keith says. What did you say? I may have broken the... I've done the worst thing in Survivor history. Yeah. <laughs> well, who knows what that is. It's not losing Flint, so I don't know. Did he cut himself on the on the idol? Is that what that blood is coming down the front of the idol? Maybe, maybe he told Jeremy he didn't want to be his partner or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of good statements in that. But I'm yeah. like, wow, that's going to cover the whole season. That's like what they do for the first episode of a lot of things. Yeah. This season on Marvel Agents of Shield. Right. A great premiere of season two, by the way. We just watched it tonight. Oh, so good. So Prope says, officially, you're quitting the game. Well, that means we have a quitter this year. And they show season. a picture of Wes crying. Yeah, but you know that's a mislead. Oh, come on. Yeah, it's a mislead. <laughs> And then, John, if you were a man, I'd knock your teeth out. And I think he's Let talking go. to somebody. I think he's talking to somebody on the other tribe. Because he's looking across when he says it. Well, so he, I, I, I don't think it's somebody on his tribe. I think he doesn't he get into it with Natalie? Because well, Natalie's not on his tribe. And it seems like in a challenge, he's talking to her. And Julie t- calls him out or something, tells him to be quiet or something. And Well, I don't think Kelly would say anything that, that would make John do that. Yeah, Missy. Missy might might if she got you know. Amped. She might come up with a cheer against him. Yeah, so. but Natalie for sure. I mean, oh, she yeah. just say whatever's on her mind. Well, of course, because he sent Nadia home. She's going to be on fire for these next few episodes. She'd probably be like, oh, "I know you. You're just a bigot." <laughs> you know, and th- them are fighting words to John Rock. That's right. So, man. Yeah, we we've seen the twenties fight, but we've never seen one of them go after somebody else. No. Nope. This will be interesting. All right. You want to do a stock up, stock down? Sure. Okay. I hadn't even thought about it yet. I thought a little. Okay. Stock down. Absolutely stock down, Val. Only because the edit just didn't show her blending in. Yeah. Based on where I had her preseason, her stock to me is gone down. Is that because of her or because of what Jeremy did? No, it's because of her. Some of the things she did just seemed... But do you, do you think she did them because she wasn't there? That she's trying to make up for lost time? I don't know why she did them. I just yeah. wasn't impressed. Yeah. And I wanted to be. Compared to what we thought she was going to be, it just she didn't play the way we thought she would start. Maybe things will change. Maybe things will calm down. Right. Um, I thought Dale had a good edit. Um, I don't think he's as as settled in as he thinks he is. But um, even with his eye, I think my stock up goes to Josh. I mean, we are, I already had him high. He's not my pick to win, but I really thought 
his placement in his tribe, even though they lost all their challenges, his placement, their trust. I would I would say him and Jeremy. Yeah. Uh, between the I guess if I had to pick one, if I had to pick one, I'd probably pick Jeremy. He all just right. he batted a thousand, I think, through the whole episode. Yeah. Well, for me, stock up went for Baylor. I already liked her preseason. Yeah. But I like her even more now. Oh yeah. So I'm doing the old way I used to do stock up, stock down. You're right. She did make a great move. Yeah. I'm not doing it how they are in their tribe. I'm doing it how I feel about them. You said stock down for Val. Yes. Um, There's a whole lot of stock down options this season. I'm going to say stock down for Wes. I think him calling out Rocker was a mistake. I think it's going to come back to hurt him. Or, or Rocker may hurt him. Same thing, yeah. <laughs> Through that left-handed splitter. Yeah. So. All right. Hey, y'all, our feedback show is Sunday night. Go to SurvivorTalkWithDND.com slash support. Not support. Dadgummit. What, David? I got a question. You, you didn't... Finger in, up at are we doing the points? Am I announcing the points tonight? Because we didn't list that, but you had me printed No, out. we're not going to list the points, but we will... But I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. If you're playing our fantasy survivor game, if, uh, whether it's on Facebook or whether you got yourself a little partner and you're competing against them, we will put up the points either tonight or tomorrow. And it will be under that, under the fantasy draft. I'll keep that as a featured um, article, a featured page through the whole season. And you know how the tribes are divided up for my tribe and for David's tribe for our for our fantasy game against each other. And what I'll have is I'll have week one's total and then their total. So like next week I'll have week two's total and their total. And if they're voted out of the game, their picture goes to black and white. All right. And I'll I'll work on it tomorrow. Are you gonna do it or am I gonna do it? Well, you can do it if you want. I'm, I'm off tomorrow, so I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. But I just want to make sure I do it the way you're explaining it, because I'm not picturing it. So we'll talk about it afterwards. Well, I I've, I've already done it, so you can just go look at it. All you have to do is update the numbers. Okay. You just go in and edit the caption. Oh, I got you. I see what yeah, you're saying now. It's really easy. So it's not going to be a list that continues. We're just going to keep updating the one that's yeah. there. You, yeah. You're just going to know how many points they got. You're not going to know what they got them for. Unless Correct. you listen to the feedback show. If you listen to the feedback show, we'll tell you how they got their 15 points. I'm going to need more okay. paper. So, <laughs> yeah. I suggest you just look at the look at the 40-foot document and write down everything. Got it. it it's an amazingly detailed document. Shana is. is amazing. We struck gold. Yes, we, we did. We struck... Actually... Someone else struck gold, and we grabbed it from them. But we won't go into that. It <laughs> fell into our pot, so it was good. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, get your feedback in. Feedback.stwdd.com is the easiest way to get there. Or survivortalkwithdnd.com slash feedback. Get it in. Sunday night, 7 p.m. is the deadline. We love audio feedback. We really do. So leave it. But we also like emailed feedback feedback so leave that as well and uh, all the different ways to leave us feedback are on our website we will be live Sunday night at what time David 10 p.m. Eastern 10 p.m. Eastern in fact I think all of our shows are going to be 10 p.m. Eastern this season yeah I really wish we could do um... oh Shane is so sweet Shana just messaged me here is the individual player totals y'all need to really stop complaining <laughs> No, she didn't say that. Okay, I was about to say, I was just checking mine, and she didn't say <laughs> She didn't really say we need to stop complaining. She said, we just lost Shana. <laughs> yeah, Shana's no longer with us. No, Shana's watching on YouTube, too. So, Got mine? All right. Uh, yeah. What are you showing me? My phone. My wallpaper. Can you see it? Yeah. Oh, man. Have you seen? Oh, yeah, you got one. I got the blue, yeah. I'm using the, uh, let's see what color I'm using. This is crazy. <laughs> I can't open my own phone. Yeah, this, uh, yeah, I got the maroon. Mm -hmm. Look at that. That looks so good. All of our graphics look so good. Yeah. You think we so, pay a fortune for them? Well, we pay a little bit. We just don't pay a fortune. <laughs> we don't pay but what it's worth. <laughs> yeah, all of our, uh, we, we have computer wallpapers, and we have maroon, blue, and yellow 
uh, phone wallpapers, and we give those to anybody that, that supports us, either one time through PayPal or becomes a patron through Patreon. We give you a free gift of digital media. That's what we do. So, anyway. Go right now, y'all. Get a t-shirt. David, I have resigned myself to the fact that even though we have well over a thousand listeners every single episode, over 1,100, over 1,200, we've had over 3,500 listeners, that doesn't mean they want to buy a t-shirt from us. Right. Yeah. I'm glad I have a t-shirt, and I'm glad that my children said they wanted one, and I'm glad that however many other people, I, I'm glad we have t-shirts for the people that want them. We're not going to sell 200 like I thought we might, mm -hmm. but you know what? I'm glad you're getting a t-shirt. Get yours today. If you send us a picture of you wearing it. Well, yeah, and you'll probably get them like two weeks after the the 29th, is I think when they'll go out. But um, but anyway, if you're like me and you're like, okay, well I'll do that later, you know, kind of like you're doing with the Amazon link, you know, I'm gonna go buy a TV. Oh, I forgot to use their link. I'll do it later. Hello. <laughs> go ahead and do it now. No, but seriously, thanks. Thanks for getting our T-shirt. Thanks for shopping Amazon. Uh, thank you for leaving us your iTunes reviews. And uh, that's about that's about it, David. Unless you want to follow me on Twitter at Survivor underscore Talk. I already do. All right. Join our Facebook group. Yep. By the way, we have a page and a group. All right. The page we don't use. It's simply there. Because people will find it and it will direct them. And there's a post that says, go to the group. Right. So I like it when you like the page, but make sure that you join our group because that's where all the discussion takes place. So, all right. David, you got anything else you want to say? I'm glad I'm off tomorrow because Miko is sending in another quiz of, uh, I think he's doing quotes. I think I saw on Facebook where he's gonna his feedback is going to be quotes and he's going to be quizzing us. Oh yeah. So I'm de I'm definitely gonna watch it again tomorrow for a third time, and this is why I like doing the podcast because I like the episode even more now. Yeah. So. You're gonna watch it a third time. I am. I'll probably be cleaning the house or cleaning the kitchen or something. But yeah, I'll probably you know watch what it. What I do on Fridays when I'm cleaning around the house. What? I listen to our podcast, David. We have a podcast. Yes. Oh, I thought we were just talking. Friends, listen to me, David. My co-host and cohort has never listened to an entire episode of our show. That's the, yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, I'm serious. He's never. And I've listened to every single one of them. But I'm here. I heard it. Yeah, I know. I, I I listen. For some reason, I enjoy it. I don't know why. You know why? Well, you had to in the beginning because we sounded horrible, and you kept finding things that we needed to improve on. I used to spend two hours or more, like at least two to three minutes for every minute we were on the air, I would spend editing. And now I just don't care if we oh mess gosh. up. Oh, gosh. I can't imagine that now. As long as... Can you imagine editing the Tony interview, the three-hour interview? No. No. It, it was horrible. I would be up till one or two in the morning, and I, I, and I would have to go to work the next day. I and was then a mess. You would text me saying you're done, and I'm already in bed asleep. Yeah, you're like, you're like, I'm getting up for work. <laughs> Why is my phone going off? So who won the football game? Uh, the Giants. Oh, I'm sorry. 40, Forty-five David. to fourteen. It was a shellacking. It was a Hunapu win. Yeah, three in a row. It was Jeremy versus Val. Pretty much. Yep. Well. All right, so let's say hello to some people who are watching. Shayna's watching on YouTube. Hello, Shayna. Uh, let's see. Boy, she's typed up. Oh, I don't have any more. Who else is Bethany commenting? was watching. Bethany, thanks, Bethany, yep. for commenting. Those are the only ones that loaded on mine. Thank you, Salome. Salami. Salome. Thank you for being our our live editor, for helping us yes. with the news, including really her. I really do appreciate that, actually. Salome. Salome. All right. Love y'all. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Music for tonight's show is Summit by Skrillex. I have no idea what else they have. I just like this song. So don't go out and buy their CD or anything. You can buy this song. It's a pretty cool song. 
I told you my suggestion for our song, for our music. Uh, what? Yeah, you want the SCA 9000 to sing something, don't you? No, no, I want your new band, that orchestra no. band, to play the Survivor theme. No, you really don't. <laughs> you really don't. That would be great. The, today famous. we learned. Dun 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 dun. Go big blue. Yeah, we spent an hour. Yeah. <laughs> what? What? Why are you muting? Maybe because I'm coughing. wheezing like a zombie and coughing all over the place. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> which, which I can't believe I'm about to say I can't wait for October 12th for the resuming oh, of no, the Walking no, David. Dead. That's not a. That's not no. Really? Really? I, I tell you what show is amazing. Big Brother Australia. I'm still hooked. Oh my goodness. No, David. It is really, really good. I turned. I went back and watched uh, Survivor again last night. Uh, skipped around a few parts and and watched certain parts. When I ended it, they had just announced the winner of Big Brother, which was obviously Derek. Yeah. He was and the then only good player. They called out all the people that were on the show. They had them on the stage, and they were doing their goodbyes as they were posing on the stage and doing their own little stands and waves and. And reminding me of why I don't want to watch Big Brother. Like I said, Big Brother Australia. It's a completely different show. Are the people different? Yes. I mean, they act different? Yes. It's totally different. Because all I had to do was look at this most recent cast of America's Big Brother, and I knew I didn't want to watch it. <laughs> well, you hated last season, remember? I did, yes. <laughs> I did. Oh. No, Big Brother Australia. And, and what's awesome is it's like... It's on every day. It's on six days a week. Yeah. So, and so every day, like, I come home for lunch and I'll watch an episode. It's great, and it's a good episode, and it and it's good. Yeah, so, I just finished my other show, so I need to find something else I need to watch. Yeah. Salome, or salami, or oh. salami. Remember how upset Josh got when Nadia said what he said? You shouldn't say salami. <laughs> you don't want to make her mad. Uh, she says, "Ha ha, you're welcome. Glad to have been your live editor. Thanks, guys. You know what's really cool, David? Sometimes I get discouraged because you know we're not the biggest, and even though I know we're not trying to be the biggest, still sometimes it frustrates me. And um, but what's really awesome is the people that like us really like us, and that's just really cool." They the people really that like the people that that listen to us, you know, they're really awesome. Yes, they are. I really appreciate it. And and our Facebook group is is so friendly and it's nice and 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 there's no backstabbing, there's no bitterness and mean talk and it's all fun and we have a great great audience. But we we've said it before that the reason we keep doing it is because we like the friends that we've made. Yeah, and it's we really love great. communicating and talking. That's why we love our Facebook page. Yeah. I sold my iPhone to one of our listeners. I haven't got the check yet, but <laughs> so he's not getting the podcast. No, it's a it's a female. Oh, okay. I'll tell you who it is. It's uh, it's it's well, I don't remember. Don't tell me. Verona. Who no, crud. I have a friend named Verona. Oh, I feel like an idiot now. Veronica. It is. Yeah, Veronica. Thank you. See, I mm, somebody just joined my choir named Verona. So oh. I got Ron and Veronica mixed up. Yeah, it was Veronica Behrman or something like that. Yeah. So, you know, she has the phone. I don't have the check yet, but but I'm sure I'll get it soon. <laughs> or donation in Patreon, never know. But, but I mean, seriously, how, how cool is it that, that you feel so comfortable with your audience that, you know, I just closed my eBay deal and sold it to her directly? I think it's cool that you got to go visit a family that gave birth to a future... D&D listener. Yeah, I got to do that too. And mm -hmm. when I went to New York, I met some of our listeners up there. That was I got awesome. To, on my way to South Carolina, I got to stop and meet Wendy and two of her daughters. Yeah. That was awesome. Very yeah. fun. Yeah. Rachel is uh, is Salome. Ah. Salome. <laughs> said Salome. Salome. There it is. Rachel is Salome, and she is like really... I think getting a little irritated at me, so I better stop. <laughs> just anyway, sir? Okay. Yeah. But anyway, we just love our audience. Thank you so much. 
And, and we're just getting started. And so, by golly, go buy a T-shirt, Dad. Go. So did we reach the Tony mark of three hours? Or are we are we still? Uh, what, what time is it? No, it's... we're at an hour and fifty minutes. <laughs> That's all for a recap. That's just hey. a lot of feedback. What was an hour and a half show? This is true. This is true. That's true. And now we're just, you know. And we got 10 minutes of strategy, 15 minutes of challenges, and the rest was just people walking around the beach. Yeah. Are are you going to watch Amazing Race? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's on Friday nights now, which is like, isn't that like a dead night? Yeah. Why would they put it? Well, they moved Big Bang to Monday nights. They shifted everything around. Well, they moved Big Bang because they got football. Oh, yeah. That's true. That's true. Right. So. It wasn't football tonight. It was a shellacking. Well, somebody was playing football. It just wasn't your Redskins. It was not. No. So you are watching Amazing Race. I haven't decided. Does it start tomorrow or has it started? I don't. Uh, I think it starts tomorrow. Oh, I guess. Are you watching? Um, hold on. Oh, I, I tried Gotham. Didn't like it. Oh, I haven't read. I haven't watched the first one yet. Gracie wants to watch it with me. Uh, watch Scorpion though, and I think that that might have a chance. That might have okay. a chance. Rachel just winked at me, so I, I, I'm okay. Okay. Um, what? You can't say um and then leave dead air there, David. If I can stop, because you stopped right now. Oh, you, it's probably just, me. Yeah. <laughs> I said Vikings should All be right. back soon, but anyway. All right. I'll tell you what. Let's end the show. Yes. We we gotta learn to you know land the plane because it's almost Friday, for me. That's right. All right, y'all. We will see you on the feedback show Sunday night. Uh, That's all I've got. Thanks for listening. How about you, Dave? You got anything else? I'm good. All right. See you, everybody. See you.